Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, I am Overhugs, and I'd like to welcome you back to Building Bread. Thanks for choosing to join us on the adventure today. Today, we are going to begin what will end up being a pretty mega project. And what we're going to do is take over this area with a pretty massive villager trading hall. I've been playing around with this in creative for quite a while, and this is going to dominate the next couple of episodes, just to warn you, because we're going to have to gather several shulker boxes full of ingredients in order to make it. And so in doing so, we're going to build a couple of different farms that are all going to contribute to this centralized project. Now, this project, this villager trading hall, is going to take up most of this space. Um, basically, I chose this area because it's far enough away from our base, which is uh, over there, 600 meters away. So because we're going to be having about 300 different villagers here, and that can create a substantial amount of lag. So I definitely don't want it in where our base is and having to have it loaded all the time, especially when we don't need it all the time. Most of the villagers that we're going to trade will be just fine resetting when we come and visit them when we need them. And the farms that will be here should overproduce what we actually need them for just in the normal amount of time. So let's mark out where exactly we're going to have to clear and see the scale of this project. All right, so we've put down some stone where this is going to be, and uh, you can see... This placement's going to be pretty big. We have to clear out this giant square in order to build what will eventually be our concert hall. There, where all our villagers will gather, as well as having a farm tower that will help provide crops to trade with them, which will become our subway and our monorail, which is how people will get to the concert hall in the first place. So the best pet of how to get... A project done is to just start working. So let's start clearing out the square for where our concert hall is going to be. So that's one shovel's worth of durability that we've already gone through. Might have to pick up another shovel for this project. And here's the lesson in not pushing your durability too far. Just broke my shovel. Uh, time to get another one. And here we are, having cleared out our perimeter. We are pretty much ready to go. So, the first thing we're going to build here is a crop farm and a villager breeder at the very top of it. And this is basically going to be how people arrive. So basically the people are going to come via the subway here and arrive to our concert hall. And there'll be a little monorail that we're going to build that will take the people to the actual concert hall themselves. And so, as usual, the best way to get something done is to start it. So let's take our super speed potion and jump into a time lapse.
So here we are with the first section of our build finally done. This was quite a bit of work. <laughs> the clearing alone probably took me about three hours. And building all this up, um, even though it's not done and it's definitely not fully decorated and detailed yet, um, it's working, which is good. So let's go through the basics of what is going on here. So over here, we have basically a combination of food farms and a villager breeder up here at the top. This is kind of a hybrid of Impulse SVs and Logical Geek Boys, villager breeder and farms, and it's just a lot of different stuff. And I wanted to build it like a tower from the very beginning. So I had this in mind. And so it's slightly adapted, but definitely a lot of their stuff to begin with. So I want to give credit where credit is due. What you see over here is the full-on villager breeder. And what we're going to do is I think we're going to go into our little safe space in the bottom here and switch on our camera account so I can walk you through the whole thing very easily. And why don't we go to day while we're at it. So I built this little safe space down in the bottom, which is probably going to be where a portal is eventually, although I might make it in the concert hall. I'm not sure yet. So let's do this. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> let's go out and deal with some monsters. And I'll bring my camera account on and we'll be right back. And once again, here we are on Underhugs, who is spectating the Overhugs account and the world. So zipping out here, there's a couple of different things I want to walk through because some of them are similar, but a little bit different. So coming in here, we see how this exactly works, is in here we have a villager and a composter. So the villager takes on the job of a farmer and they're going to go around and pick carrots and replant them. And what they're going to do when they fill up their inventory is they're going to come over to this other villager here who is trapped behind two hopper mine carts. The trap door there is keeping them in place and making sure that this farmer can't walk through them and displace these hopper mine carts. When their inventory is full, they're going to see that this other villager is hungry and walk over to this section and try and toss them the carrots that they've been picking. This isn't going to work, and here we go. We can see this happening right now. He's trying to do it, and it doesn't happen because the hopper minecarts capture them immediately. And this pulls it all the way down to go down into this storage system. And as you can see, we have several different ones. We have carrots, we have beetroots, we have potatoes, two different things of potatoes. And all of these will be farmed automatically and thrown into this system here. And what will happen is the food will come all the way down this chain between the hopper minecarts and the hoppers themselves. And it will get caught in these final hoppers. What we have here is we have a comparator that is measuring this chest and checking to see if there are any items in it. And as soon as there's an item in it, it will power this block, which will lock this hopper and prevent anything from going further down. And the reason that we want to do that is we want to create a system that will completely fill a hopper minecart before it sends it out over here, over to the storage system, which is very similar to what we've seen before. This is an item filter with a hopper chain. This is all stuff that we've seen before in our mob farm, our general mob farm episode. And I'll throw a card up so that you can see that. And so this hopper minecart, when it gets over here, it will slowly drain. It's only going to be at hopper speed but it will send these items across and put it into this item filter, which will then filter them down so that each different food gets in its own different chests. And we've built this enough so that we have double storage space for everything, because I see this having quite a bit after time goes on. So this hopper minecart, when it's done, which, or which won't take that long, when it's done, it will go all the way back here, follow the rails, and come to this section where it will wait for it to, set to be fully filled up before it goes over again to drain. So this is how we're collecting all the food that we're eventually going to trade with our villagers when we set them up in the trading hall here. At the very top is going to be the system that provides all of the villagers that we're going to need for the hall itself. And this works very similar way is we have two different villagers in here, one of them being a farmer because of the composter. So it provides all the food that they're ever going to need. When a baby is 
born, what will happen is it will see the beds over here. And like most children, it wants to jump on them. So it runs over here and goes over this trap door. It obviously can't cross this to get to the beds, so it falls down to this water stream. So it comes over here with the water stream and lands on this wall. The wall is slightly taller than one block. I think it's one and a quarter. So it gets pushed up a little bit of the way, and when it ages into an adult, the head gets caught in this water stream, which makes it float and come up here, and then they get caught in this section right here with all the other villagers. What we've done is we have a chest with a dispenser on a rail line. So if we hit this button, it will dispense a minecart, pick up a villager, and then send them around. And this is how we filled this entire thing. We grabbed two villagers from our original villager breeder back at our base. And then from there, we grabbed two villagers from our original base and brought them through this nether portal and stocked this top one here after we built it and then have been letting this slowly breed over time. I AFK'd overnight in order to get the amount of food and the amount of villagers that are here, but this is totally passive. This will just continue to breed as long as we leave this glass plane open. And if we want to shut this off, we can just pull this piston and it'll push the glass across. And again, this is a logical geek boy setup. Credit where credit is due. He produces some absolutely amazing designs. And quite frankly, I could change this up a little bit and claim it's my own design, but it's going to be the same basic thing. So I don't really see any point of doing that. I'd rather credit the community and make sure that you know that there's other great sources out there and introduce you to them. So that is what we have done so far. We have our food, we have our villager breeder, and we have started to accumulate what we're gonna need for the first layer of our training hall. So let's fly back to our base for a little bit and talk about what we're gonna do for the next couple of episodes. I warned you that this was probably gonna be a mega project. And the reason for that is there's a great deal of materials that we need that we have not gathered up yet. And we don't really have farms for either. We've got a couple of things. We're gonna need a great deal of red carpet. So we're good on the wool farm there. We're going to need a lot more food than we have in order to trade with some of the farmers that we're gonna do in the first row. So we'll definitely level these farms and take all the potatoes over. What we don't have is a couple of different things. First of which is a concrete maker. We're definitely going to need one of those because I think the total is something like 28 stacks of concrete that we're gonna need for the entire project by the time we're done. And I really don't feel like sitting at our tea that we made one of the previous episodes and go through and do that. So we're gonna skip that. The other thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to take on an ocean monument because we're gonna need a great deal of sea lanterns. That's one of the lighting effects that I wanna use in this build, and we haven't done that yet. So both of those are going to be another episode, but they're gonna be a pretty close to now one, like maybe the next episode. Hint, hint. So yeah, definitely the next episode. So other than that, what I wanted to show you today was what we've been working on a bit off camera. I started digging out this area down here, which we haven't seen before, and this is going to be our storage system. I had this, like, vision in my head of this glass area looking out into the ocean, almost like a lair for a superhero or something that you burst out into the water and you can take away and fly out to do save the day or whatever it is. <laughs> like, something heroic. And we definitely are going to need a storage system relatively soon because of the massive amount of items that we're going to be gathering. And I haven't decided yet if I want to do this as a just massive couple of chests for every item and have it go all the way around, or if I want it to be something where it's a smart sorting system, like a multi-item sorter where we can have a number of chests that all do the same thing. Like for example, this chest is all quartz items, and then these chests are all stone items, and these chests are all stone brick items. And both of those are interesting to build um, for different reasons. Like I said, I haven't decided yet, so still thinking about it. And the other thing that's gone on since last time 
is I did manage on Halloween to get a great deal of mobs that have the jack-o'-lantern, which is why you see them here. There's the ones back there that just have the carved pumpkin, but both of these are jack-o'-lanterns, as well as these three here. And these are all zombies. Zombies were definitely the easiest ones to get. And I did get one skeleton. The skeleton took a very long time because they don't generate as quickly, and they're much harder to lure. Uh, I managed to get a zombie piglin as well, but something happened to it. It suffocated in the block. I'm not exactly sure why. So that was unfortunate, but we were able to get some mobs that you can only get on one day of the year uh, in actual regular Minecraft without using commands or going into creative. The other thing that we did off camera was we put in a triple layer of carpeting here. And as you can see, as I knock it down, this is three layers deep. And the reason that did that was because I kept going into the nether portal here and uh, basically running into, like, mobs. Like, I would just go through here and go into our area in the nether, and then all of a sudden I'd be surrounded by zombies, which is uh, obviously not what we wanted and not good. So that's basically what's been going on off camera. Uh, in addition, not too fascinating, but we've extended our, our nether hub here out so that it goes back to our area where we've been working on what will be our villager trading hall. And that's what this portal is. So I want to close this up and I wa actually want to go and fix all of this because we definitely have some stuff here, but it doesn't look anywhere near as nice as this area does. The one that we actually finished up early in the game. So I think I might redesign this too, because it's okay, but it's not great. I don't like all the torches. I think we need to build some light into the floor. So that's definitely going to be another episode, but it's going to be one that's not too far away either. Ow. Ow. Face. Ow. <laughs> Sometimes the nether hubs are not uh, the best thing for your face. So looking at this lava, I think we're going to call it an episode. So... I would like to thank you for joining us on the adventure today. I have been Overhugs, and this has been Building Bread. As a reminder, I do donate all the profits that I make off of this to local food banks, so it would greatly appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, or tell a friend. Together, we can help people that are in need. I hope you have the most wonderful of days, and I'll see you soon.